Now, if you can look closely, you can actually see this. Hello friends, I hope you guys are doing well. I had so much fun this week creating this little demonstration for you guys. This was Elephant Toothpaste. And the reason I did it is because it has something to do with the project that you're gonna be working on this week. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. So it's basically, it's kind of like H2O, a water molecule, but it has an extra oxygen molecule in there. Now, what we did is we added a catalyst to the hydrogen peroxide, which ripped off that extra oxygen atom, and we used soap to capture that, the gas, the oxygen gas that was being released, and it created a whole bunch of foam. So what you're left with is just water, oxygen, and a little bit of foam from the soap. It's a super fun, uh, super fun experiment. So this week's, what are we doing here? This week's project is gonna be all about baking. So one of the catalysts that I used was manganese dioxide. That was causes those like big black kind of eruptions. But the other one that I was using was actually just baker's yeast. Yeast has a chemical called catalase in it, which is, and it's what causes that rapid breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. So yeast can also be used in baking. And that's what we're gonna be doing just coming up right after this. I'm gonna be demonstrating a little baking recipe that I want you to make your own. I want you to take it and make some changes to it and do it again. It's a pretty small batch, so you can make a, a batch every couple days and you'd get through it no problem. And it's, it's fun, my kids really enjoyed baking. They enjoyed this thing too. So anyways, I hope you guys are doing good. Links to um, Dropbox where you can share your creations with me uh, is down in the video description as well as my Instagram and a few other things. So hope you guys are doing well and take care. And here is one more clip of the elephant toothpaste. I did want to remind you that this was just a demonstration. You guys are not going to do this one at home. I didn't allow my kids to, to perform this experiment at home either. They were allowed to come up after the reaction had taken place because at this point, the only thing that is uh, happening here is there is water, oxygen, and a little bit of soap. I told them not to touch the foam because it was an exothermic reaction and it got pretty hot. All right, so for this week's project, you're going to be making Mr. Hunter's Cinnamon Swirl Bread. You're gonna start out with your flour, sugar, a little bit of salt, and some yeast, and you're gonna go ahead and mix those dry ingredients together. Now you're gonna move on to your wet ingredients, which is a little bit of butter, an egg, some warm milk to help that yeast react, and also a little bit of vanilla extract. So once you have all those mixed together, you're gonna combine the wet ingredients into the dry, and you're gonna start mixing that until it's all incorporated. This is Probably the hardest part stirring that dough. It's super elastic and super strong. So you're gonna have to get that out onto um, a countertop, a well floured countertop, and make sure your hands are nice and floured too. And you're gonna start kneading the bread. This is gonna help that gluten in the bread form and it's gonna make for a much more nice texture once the bread's finished uh, making. So if it starts sticking to your hand, just add some flour. It's always easier to add flour to a dough than it is to um, add water it doesn't work well so keep kneading it probably for about five minutes or so you're gonna end up with a nice little little lump of dough that's uh, soft doesn't really stick to your hands and you're gonna put that into a well-oiled bowl and let it rise for about an hour and a half now while it rises you can start working on the swirl filling and this is the part where you can really change it up I made this uh, kind of chocolate chocolate mm, ganache kind of not really a ganache but chocolate filling but you can use cinnamon sugar this is one where you can really change it up so after your dough has risen it's gonna look at least two times as big you kind of knock down all that extra air and this is where you're gonna start rolling it out uh, make sure you are working with a well floured countertop and just roll that out as best you can I have a, I think it's like a nine by four little tin, and that's kind of what I was shooting for. Spread it all out and then add your topping. You're gonna spread that out nice and evenly, leaving a little bit at the top that doesn't have any filling on it so it can attach to the other side of the bread. You're gonna go ahead and get that into the tin and you're gonna let it proof for about 30 to 45 minutes. 
Now, at this point, you are going to choose what kind of wash you want to put on top of it. You can use butter or you can use uh, a, an egg mixed with a little bit of water. I used egg, an egg wash. It's just a scrambled beaten egg with a little bit of water and it makes your top nice and shiny when it comes out of the oven. So there it is out of the oven. I'm gonna let it cool for five minutes or so. You see me touching it, it's already cooled down uh, enough to touch. Roll that out onto a wire rack and you wanna let this cool completely before you cut into it. It's gonna take at least an hour, maybe probably longer to cut into it. But then you get to cut into it, which is the fun part because you get to see uh, your swirl and how it came out. I went for the chocolate swirl and it came out very nice. Or I thought it did. The kids loved it. They We blew through it in literally a half hour and it was gone. But this one's fun because you can go back to it and you can make uh, a different recipe each time. You can All you have to do is change the filling that you put in it. A cinnamon sugar one would be great, but you guys figure out your own one or you can use one of my suggestions. And I hope you have a lot of fun baking this.